Welcome to the Daily Devotional with Derek Nider. Thanks for joining us as he walks us through the pages of Scripture with a daily word of insight and encouragement. Hey, we're in Genesis chapter 4. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn to Genesis chapter 4. Great, great story today. We're just going to hit a small section of it. Let me pray for us and, and we'll get into God's Word. God, thank you so much for all of these people that have taken time to open up the Scriptures. I just pray, God, as they've made this um, sacrifice of time that you'd bless them by filling their hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, the Bible says in verse 1, now Adam knew Eve, his wife. That means that they consummated a sexual relationship. I mean, I just said that in a super complicated way. They, They had sex. Now Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain, saying, I have begotten a man with the help of the Lord. With the help of the Lord. You know, I was reading this um, because I'm not just doing Genesis for your daily devotional. I'm doing it in my uh, devotional time as well. And I, I just, I hit this verse, and it's not like I haven't read it before, but it just really struck me. It was so interesting that Eve's response, of course, this, the, this is the first baby that's been born. Um, this is because of that we know that this is the first time she she carried a baby and conceived, carried, and birthed a baby. But she says, you know, her response is really, I think, profound. I have gotten a man, she had a boy, I have, I have gotten a man with the help of the Lord. Now, look, you know biology, and you know how it works. And, you know, it would be easy to say, well, wait a minute, you know, like God really didn't have anything to do with it. That was between you and your husband, right? That's where all the work was done. But she says something that is so profound because she sees beyond that. You know, she sees beyond that. She's, she sees beyond the, the, the sexual act, the, the intimate moment of love, which, which is, you know, between a husband and a wife. You know, it's beautiful how God has provided a way for us to express in a physical way the depth of intimacy, the commitment of fidelity, um, an expression of personal loyalty, right? I mean, you know, that sexual relationship is not just about, it's not just about procreation. God help us. I mean, for sure, part of the purpose of it is, you know, to, to, to multiply, but that is not the primary purpose. It's, it's a, an expression, a very, very deep expression of love and how trivialized it's been in our culture today and, and transactionalized and, and marketed and exploited. And it's just so sad. But what she sees is this. I'm totally on a tangent right now. But what she sees is this. She sees that God's been in it. Like God has been in it. Life doesn't just happen without the help of the Lord. That's, that's what I'm saying here. She knows it. She knows that life has come from her body. You know what an amazing thing that women have a nine-month gestation period where life is being developed within them cell by cell and personality and qualities and attributes. And, and, and as this happens the first time, she's like, this wasn't just us. This was God. God was in this. In fact, she uses the name of God. This was Yahweh. And, you know, for the very first time, she expresses how God is the one who is ultimately behind all of life. All of life. I mean, David got this, right, in the Psalms where he talks about how we are fearfully and wonderfully made in the darkness of the matrix of the womb. God is present, you know, multiplying cells and knitting us together. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. You know, science may want to just reduce it to a, to a clump of cells and the, the process of um, life developing over the course of billions of years. That's science's story. There is another story here. Like all of the aspects of cellular di- division and development are true. But, you know, they just... They don't answer the real question. They don't see beyond the physical. Life is a miraculous gift that is given by God. And Eve recognized it. She's like, I mean, I think that this was kind of a a song of praise, you know, like, God, you're good. Thank you. I recognize this as a gift. Hey, a couple things today. Let's 
make sure we value life, every life, right? Every single life. And sometimes we don't, sometimes we don't. We get in culture wars and there's subcultures that we're against or, you know, there's people that we don't like or there's people that, you know, maybe we see on a daily basis. Maybe it's a homeless person or um, some person that we just don't, we've attributed no value to. And, and I got to tell you, I was in, I was, on Fremont Street, and we were doing um, an outreach on Fremont Street, and I was walking to the venue that we had uh, rented, and and I walked past this homeless guy who had urinated all over himself, and there was just this like really foul smell emanating from him, and God spoke to me, and he said, Derek, he is made in my image. And that, man, that just like, it struck me so strongly. Let's value people today as, made in God's image. And then also, hey, if we have children, we have the blessing of children, remember, they may be hard, they may be difficult, they may be cantankerous, they may be agenda-driven, they may think you're the dumbest person on the face of the earth, but you know what? They're still a gift from God. And so love your kids, all right? Have a great day. We hope this podcast has ministered to you. If it has, we welcome you to rate it or leave a review. If you would like to stay connected with Pastor Derek Knider or find many more teachings, please visit awakenlv.org. Click visit and then choose Pastor Derek Knider. These links are also in this episode's description. Until next time, God bless you.